The Battle of Schleis took place on October 9, 1806 in Schleis, Germany between a Prussian-Saxon division under Bogoslav Friedrich Emanuel von Tauentzien and a part of Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte's First Corps under the command of Jean-Baptiste Drouet. Comte alone. It was the first clash of the War of the Fourth Coalition, part of the Napoleonic Wars. As Emperor Napoleon I of France's Grand Army QT advanced north through the Frankenwald it struck the left wing of the armies belonging to the Kingdom of Prussia and the Electorate of Saxony, which were deployed on a long front. Schleis is located 30 km north of Hof and 145 km southwest of Dresden at the intersection of routes 2 and 94. At the beginning of the battle, elements of Drouet's division clashed with Tauantzian's outposts. When Tauantzian became aware of the strength of the advancing French forces, he began a tactical withdrawal of his division. Wiki Murat assumed command of the troops and began an aggressive pursuit. A battalion-sized Prussian force to the west was cut off and suffered heavy losses. The Prussians and Saxons retreated north, reaching Alma that evening. Background Political During the War of the Third Coalition, King Frederick William III of Prussia signed the Potsdam Accord with Tsar Alexander I of Russia, an active belligerent. On 3 November 1805, Frederick William promised to send an ambassador to Napoleon with an offer of armed mediation, unless the French emperor agreed to disgorge the Kingdom of Holland and Switzerland and renounce the crown of the Kingdom of Italy. The Prussians would join Habsburg Austria and the Russian Empire against Napoleon. Curiously, the Prussian army had already been mobilized against Russia in September when the Tsar demanded that Prussia join the Third Coalition. Irritated by Napoleon's violation of its territory of Ansbach in September 1805, Prussia subsequently moved toward an understanding with Russia. Napoleon managed to stall the Prussian ambassador Christian Graf von Horvitz until after his great victory at the Battle of Austerlitz on 2 December. 1805. Soon afterward, Austria sued for peace and Russia withdrew its troops, effectively dissolving the Third Coalition. On 15 February, Napoleon maneuvered Prussia into agreeing to transfer several of her territories to France and France's allies in return for Hanover, which France had previously occupied. France invaded the Kingdom of Naples on 8 February 1806 and the last foothold on the Italian peninsula fell to the conquerors on 23 July. On 25 July, Napoleon created the Confederation of the Rhine, a French satellite in Germany. In the face of these French aggressions, the pro-war faction at the Prussian court, centered around Queen Louise, soon gained the upper hand. The Pacific Horvitz was dismissed as chief minister and on 7 August 1806 King Frederick William determined to go to war against Napoleon. Military Prussia mobilized 171,000 soldiers, including 35,000 cavalry, 15,000 gunners, and 20,000 Saxon allies. The troops were grouped in three armies. Feld Marshal Charles William Ferdinand, Duke of Brunswick concentrated his soldiers around Leipzig and Naumburg in the centre. The left wing, led by General of the Infantry Frederick Lewis, Prince of Hohenlohe Ingelfingen assembled near Dresden and included the Saxon contingent. Generals Ernst von Ruschel and Gebhard Leberecht von Blücher gathered the right wing at Göttingen and Mühlhausen. Presently, Napoleon became aware of the Prussian preparations for war. He called up 50,000 conscripts of the class of 1806 on 5 September and put the French forces in Germany on alert. When he received intelligence that the Prussians absorbed the Saxon army into their forces, he rapidly massed his Grand AAR Army QT with the goal of destroying the Prussian army. On 5 October, Napoleon issued an order describing the order of march for the Grand AAR Army QT's invasion of the Electorate of Saxony. 
Marshall Bernadotte's first corps led a center column, followed by Marshal Louis Davout's third corps, most of Marshal Marat's cavalry reserve, and Marshal Francois Joseph Lefebvre's Imperial Guard. The right column was formed by Marshal Nicolas Salt's IV Corps in the lead, Marshal Michel Nye's VI Corps, and the Bavarians in the rear. The left column contained Marshal Jean Lanner's V Corps, followed by Marshal Pierre Augereau's VII Corps. Napoleon directed the right column toward Hof, the center column from Kronich to Schleis, and the left column from Coburg to Saalfeld. The 59,131 strong right columns 4th Corps numbered 30,956 infantry, 1,567 cavalry, and 48 guns. Its 6th Corps had 18,414 infantry, 1,094 cavalry and 24 guns, and Lieutenant General Carl Philipp von Red's Bavarian Division had 6,000 infantry, 1,100 cavalry, and 18 guns. The 38,055-man left column's 5th Corps counted 19,389 infantry, 1,560 cavalry, and 28 guns and its 7th Corps had 15,931 infantry, 1,175 cavalry, and 36 guns. The 75,637-man center column's first corps numbered 19,014 infantry, 1,580 cavalry, and 34 guns. Its third corps had 28,655 infantry, 1,538 cavalry and 44 guns. Its Imperial Guard had 4,900 infantry, 2,400 cavalry, and 36 guns. Its Cavalry Reserve had 17,550 troopers and 30 guns. Not counted in the previous totals were 9,000 gunners, sappers, and others. The Prussian High Command held several councils of war, but no strategy could be agreed upon until the 5th of October reconnaissance revealed Napoleon's forces were already moving north from Bayreuth towards Saxony. Then it was decided that Hohenlohe would move to Rudolstadt, Brunswick to Erfurt, and Ruschel to Gotha. The right wing would send forces to menace the French communications at Fulda. The reserve under General Eugene Frederick Henry, Duke of Württemberg, was ordered to move from Magdeburg to Halle. The Thuringian and Franconian forests stretch northwestward from Bohemia. This area is composed of wooded mountains of about 750 meters altitude. In 1806, there were only a few poor roads through the tract. Napoleon selected his invasion route in the zone where the belt of rough terrain was narrowest, the Franconian forest to the east. The French army crossed the Saxon border on 8 October, screened in front by light cavalry. Napoleon was not certain where the opposing Prussian Saxon army was located, so his army was arranged in a battalion carré, capable of concentrating against threats coming from any direction. Murat personally led the light cavalry screen in front of Napoleon's battalion carré. In the east general of brigade Antoine La Salle scouted toward Hoff while General of Brigade Edouard Jean-Baptiste Milhard probed toward Saalfeld to the west. The objects of the light cavalry's attentions were the location of Prussian and Saxon units and details of the road net. On the 8th, Murat's horsemen seized the bridge at Saalberg Ebersdorf. A small defending force fell back east to Geffel where it rendezvoused with General Major Tauantien as his division retreated north from Hoff. That evening, Tauantzian assembled his troops at Schleis. About 9,000 Saxons lay at Auma 15 kilometers north-northeast of Schleis and Obis Karl Andreas von Bogoslorsch's Prussian detachment was 18 kilometers north-northwest at Neustadt and Derola. General Major Christian Ludwig Schimmelfenig's detachment of 600 cavalry was 20 kilometers to the northwest at Posnek. Tauantzian's division counted 6,000 Prussians and 3,000 Saxons. 
Bernadotte's three infantry divisions were led by generals of Division Drouet, Pierre Dupont de la Ratang, and Olivier Macou Rivaud de la Raffinière, and his corps cavalry brigade by General of Brigade Jacques Louis Francois de Leste de Tilly. General of Division Jean Baptiste Ebele Acute commanded the Corps Artillery Reserve. Battle. See the Yenar Auerstadt campaign order of battle for the composition and organization of the French, Prussian, and Saxon armies. On 9 October, the first clash occurred between the troops of Bernadotte and Tauantzian near the Oskitz Wood, a belt of timber which lies south of Schleis. Bernadotte ordered General of Brigade François Werle to clear the forest to the right as Drouet's division advanced on Schleis. In the thick woods, the infantry moved ahead while Wartier's regiment followed behind. Werle's advance guard took possession of the woods but was prevented from continuing on by a Prussian force under General Major Rudolf Ernst. Christoph von Bieler by 2 p.m., the French were in strength and towing and decided to abandon Schleis. The Prussian division fell back to the north covered by Biller's rear guard of one infantry battalion and one and a half cavalry regiments. Drouet attacked Schleis at 4 p.m. and drove out the last of the Prussians. North of the town, Murat charged the rear guard with the 4th Hussar Regiment, but this attack was repulsed by the Prussian horsemen. Reinforced by the 5th Chasseurs a Cheval Regiment and with infantry support, Murat pressed back Biller's troops to the wood north of Oettersdorf. Earlier, Tauantzian sent an officer named Hobe with one battalion, one squadron, and two guns to Crispendorf about six kilometers west of Schleis. Hobe's assignment was to guard the right flank and maintain communications with Schimmelfenig's cavalry in Posnack. When Tauingen began to fall back, Hobe's detachment retreated to the northeast to rejoin his division. At the wood near Pormitz, a village four kilometers north of Schleis, the detachment found itself caught between Murat's cavalry and one of Broe's battalions. Attacked in a marshy forest, Hobe's force was badly mauled and lost one of its cannons. Most of the losses in the battle were from Hobe's luckless detachment. The Prussians and Saxons lost 12 officers and 554 rank and file killed, wounded, captured, and missing, as well as one artillery piece captured. French losses are unknown but probably light. Result Tauantzian retreated to Alma where his tired and hungry troops camped at 7 p.m., joined to the Saxon troops under General der Cavalerie Hans Gottlob von Zeschwitz. The total number of troops at Alma was 16,400 strong. That evening, Bogoslaushi's 3,000 men were still at Neustadt and Schimmelfenig's 600 cavalry remained at Posnack. Prince Louis Ferdinand of Prussia's 8,000-man division held Saalfeld to the west. Hohenlohe had 8,000 troops at Orlim under south of Jena. The rest of the Prussian army was strung out to the west. Brunswick with the main body lay at Herfit. Ruschel was positioned farther west near Gotha, while Blücher held Eisenach. General Karl August Grand Duke of Saxe Weimar Eisenach led an 11,000-man corps with an advance guard at Schmalkalden and a detachment under General Christian Ludwig von, winning at Vacher. Duke Eugene of Wattenberg's reserve lay far to the north between Magdeburg and Halle. When Hohenlohe heard about the encounter at Schleis, he ordered the troops of his left wing to mass between Rudolstadt and Jena before moving east to the support of Tauantzian and the Saxons. However, Brunswick refused to allow the maneuver so Hohenlohe suspended it. In the meantime, Hohenlohe sent a vaguely worded order to Louis Ferdinand, which the prince misinterpreted as an order to defend Saalfeld. The Battle of Saalfeld occurred the next day in front of Lanner's left flank corps. Commentary Historian Francis Lorraine Petra notes that Napoleon's Grand AARME acute he had a superior organization, employed better tactics, had more youthful and energetic subordinates, and enjoyed a 20% to 25% numerical superiority over their enemies. The French Corps were commanded by marshals capable of managing the details of their organizations. 
Lacking the core system, the Prussian commanders were often forced to issue orders that went into great detail. The French army was led by a single commander who alone made the decisions. Against Napoleon, the leaders of the Prussian army, who were mostly older, frequently held councils of war which never decided anything definite. Though Brunswick was nominally the Prussian commander-in-chief, his orders had to be confirmed by King Frederick William. While Hohenlohe and Ruschel were almost independent of him, Napoleon's strategy was simple, but the Prussian generals felt compelled to plan for every eventuality, resulting in a much wider deployment of their forces. On the evening of 9 October, between Winning's detachment in the west and Zeschwitz's Saxons in the east, the Prussian Saxon army covered a 145-kilometer front. Furthermore, the reserve was hopelessly out of touch at Magdeburg. Meanwhile, Napoleon's powerful battalion Carré advanced on a front of only 60 kilometers.